Greetings, Internet. Welcome to Aaron Plays, and I hope you're doing fantastically well. If you watch the end of episode 11, you'll know that this is actually part of episode... This is the second part of episode 11, which I'm now calling episode 12. I shot a full one hour, 24 minute video. Well, all combined once I'd actually joined them all the bits together. And I was like, that's too long. You know, that's, that, that's movie length. So I thought, nah, I'm, I'm going to split it. And so I've split it into two episodes. Hence why you've got me coming in with this background rather than me coming up with from the camera when I'm playing the ball. Because normally this kind of background is when I'm doing a game on Vassal. Um, but you're here now. And yeah, let's, well, all I'm going to say is, Let's go down to the map, even though we've been down on it if you were in episode 11. So um, if you can hit the like, subscribe, comments, it all does a big favor for the channel, all gets it promoted, which gets other, other people's to watch. I hope you enjoy what I'm doing. Remember to do the little dingling as well. And let's go down to the map to continue episode 11A or 11B, but actually we're going to call it episode 12. Until then. Rasmus. He will do the same. Eight oh paragraph eight oh nine. Stands up and moves into there, then falls prone. And then Zypher. He does paragraph 800. Lie prone. Are they expecting some kickback from me? But oh, I'm running out of men. That cipher done. He just falls prone. Okay, so we've got Coral Bell and the Panic in Hudson. What to do? Oh yeah, there could be more Germans in uh, this is church. So I've got three. I do have the wounded Evans and Dylan to come. Whoop whoop. What to do? Okay. Well. I'm going to move Bell into this hex. Dylan can't move. Actually, no, they're going to become aware anyway, aren't they? Next round. Yeah. I'll move Cornwall into this hex. So Bell and Corn, that is literally all they can do. And Hudson remains prone. We're hunkering down in that building for this, the rest of this round. Okay, that ends round two. Let's do one more action round, then we'll call it the end of this video. So... Okay, awareness, round three. All your soldiers are automatically aware. So Evans and Dylan move up on the track here. Let's try and keep the Germans separate. Okay, not looking good. Random event. Last round of event brought us doing a sniper into the field. That's a six. 
Do I get any more help? I need it. Six. Go to paragraph. Go to paragraph fifteen. Well, that's very good. That gives a rousing cheer. Your soldiers see a flight of B-17s heading for the heart of Germany. Thanks. So we, 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 we've had a, a Storch aircraft, an ME-109, and the US Air Force are off bombing Germany. I need the help here. Bastards. Okay, great. Um, that was a random event. Initiative. Ah, oh, man. Please, can I just win something? Yay! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, I might feel like running around the table and giving myself a slap on the back. I've won an initiative round. Five to seven. Okay, so let's fill this chart up. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, okay. So we won the initiative. So let's start looking at this German Neumann. He rolled, they rolled a five. So he's going to actually get two rounds and the disadvantaged. Zypher, the NCO, he rolled a four, and he's on a four, rolled a five. Of course, he is it? Uh, two rounds as well. Yeah, they're going to get two. He's going to get two rounds. So they lose the initiative, but they get two rounds. Okay, my guys rolled a seven. And their initiative is three. Okay, so they're up here. Potentially panicking, but I have got... Yeah, I've got enough guys in that hex to stop them to make sure they're not panicked. Right, Evans and Dylan on a two. With a seven means they get one action. The Germans on a two with a five. <laughs> they lose the initiative, but they still get two. Out. Oh. And these both here, the one. Okay. Um, Roll a seven with Hudson. So he gets one action. And the German with a five. Blimey, he only gets one action. Wow. There we go. It's not bitter. German activation number is a six. Okay. So in actual fact, we have Cornwall and Bell going first. What? To do. Okay. Cornwall. Now he's armed with a, a rifle. He's got one grenade left. Free stance change. I'm going to get try and get him. Well, I will get into that building. Going through the door. Um, I don't think there's an additional. It says aperture hex side plus one, so that's a five. Cost across this total hex side is added to the cost to enter the hex. Okay, it doesn't say to exit. So uh, that's one to there. Two, three. Cornwall has got four. Point two three. Um, actually, I'm rushing. Rewind. I still got to do paragraph checks. So, R nine. R nine. It says sighting four. We've had sighting four, so that's nothing. That's one, two, three. So now we are in S11, S10, S9. Let's 
sighting five. We've had sighting five as well, so there's nothing additional there. And then he crouches. And that's Cornwall done. We're then looking at Bell. He'll do the same thing. He's also got four movement points and ends there. Okay. Next up is the German disadvantage two turns. And again, we do these in alpha order. So the first one is Nyman the sniper. We have an activation number of six. He does, oh, I went with the wrong special order. He does 807. If an active target is in sight, crouch and conduct best fire at easiest target. Okay, because I've moved here. Just double check there, line of sight. Oh, does it go through that brush? If it does, he can't see me. It definitely goes into that hex. So he can't see me. Interesting. Yeah, just have to double check that because in most games, brush doesn't block line of sight. Um, but in ambush, it does. And it's the whole hex. So yeah. He, Nyman cannot see Bell or Campbell. He definitely can't see through the building. So I don't think he has a viable target. So let's go back on his paragraph and see what he does. Uh, he does he's, he's in operations B. We rolled a six. Paragraph 807. Just have to remind myself. 807. Right. If no active target in sight, run into open hex or crawl into any other type of hex. Full prone after action if free each stance available. All right, so no active target, there are none. Run into open hex or crawl into any other hex. So we have to look at the hex he's in, which is T3, and that will tell us which hex he goes to, and that will determine what terrain it is. T3. First time, T3, he'll be going into T2. I so he's going up a level, T2. That's definitely not open. So that'll be a crawl. So if no active target in sight, run into open hex or crawl into any other type. So he's crawled. Fall prone after action if free starts change. He was already crouched, so he will now fall prone. Okay. Maybe that's not what I'm not doing enough is falling prone. Could be. Okay, so that's Nyman. Next up, we have Rasmus. Where is Rasmus? Rasmus is over here. Okay. Rasmus. He's on. What do we roll? We rolled a, a six. Paragraph 801 Crouch, then conduct best fire at easiest target. Okay, so Rasmus crouches, and will fire, easiest target, in fact there's only one target, the jeep's not a target, well the jeep is a target, there is a wounded guy there, can't fire at the incapacitated guys, but you can fire at Evans, We'll put on the map. 
So what is the... Very careful of the wording. 801. Crouch, think about best fire that's aimed at easiest target. Okay. So you can see through the window at a crouch guy, or you can see a prone guy in the in the jeep. Which is the easiest target of those two? Crouched in a building will be minus four. Prone. Hmm. What is that? Did cover is minus three. So the actual easiest target is the wounded guy. Yeah. Can you see him easily? One. Oh wait, no. There's a crest hedge, crest line here. Ooh. Crest block, but do they block if you're adjacent to them? Crest do block, no matter what or where. So. He can fire down that, so that it, that is no longer a target, so he's firing into this building here. He does have a bolt-action rifle, so a range of one, two, three, four hexes. So that's short range, short range, and that's a five. His weapon skill is minus two, takes it to a three, and he's firing at a crouching guy in through an aperture. Another minus four. So he'll only hit on a zero. Every die roll, every die roll. Okay, so he misses. Because he's a poor shot. Thank goodness for that. And then, was 801 won't crouch, then conduct best fire at each easiest target, fall prone after fight if free stance change available. It isn't, so he stays crouched. So that's Rasmus. Zypher, the squad leader, who's in, in this hex here, who's currently prone. Whoops. What's he going to do? Let's have a look. Um, Zypher, we are on condition six. It was a roll of a six for their actions. He's going to paragraph six nine six. That was the same last time. Six nine six. If an active target is within seven hexes, crouch and conduct best fire, then fall prone. No, fall prone after fire if free stance change is available. Okay, there is targets. If an active target within seven hexes, it will be this. Uh, right, so now he can see, definitely see him, and he can see there. So six, if an active target is within seven hexes, crouch and conduct best fire. Okay, so he crouches, he comes out of his prone. His best fire uh, is conduct best fire. Okay, it doesn't say easiest target. And it doesn't so, so he's gonna do gonna do an aim shot. Best fire means he's doing an aim shot. Doesn't mean doesn't say closest target, doesn't say easiest target. So we have three, well, we have three available targets, really. One, two, three. So let's see which one he's going to do. Bell, one to three. Cornwall, four to six. Seven, eight, nine on the other dude. Evans, ten, reroll. Three, one, three. He fires a bell, which means he has a potential of hitting the two targets because he's firing with a machine pistol. Okay, so machine pistol is a range of one, two, three, so it's short range. 
Um, I'm not sure you can see there because the aperture is that hex. Then those three there. So yes, you can see through that aperture. Um, you can't see through this windy, but you can definitely see through that windy. Okay, so drop range is a five. Yeah, two four hex range. So it's a five. His weapon skill, Cyphers, is plus one, so that's a six. But he's finding a crouch guy through an aperture. Minus four makes it a two. It's an automatic weapon. Yes, it's a plus one for the other guy in the hex. That makes it a three. Ooh. He misses. Thank goodness for that. All right, so that's Zypher done. So all the Germans done their first round. That's okay. So we're into one turn now. So I re-roll the German activation number, and it is now two. I don't need to keep these tra turn trackers on there anymore. So we're on German activation number two. Okay, I can remember, I can activate my guys in any order. For some reason, yeah, I think both those Germans are prone. Because they moved and they went prone. Yeah, Cypher stood up. Okay. What to do? I think I might have been doing these windows a little bit, um, yeah, from this hex. It's still going to cross through that building there to there, so you can't see there. I mean, the line of sight, yes, but definitely can't see there because from the centre to the centre crosses through this building. So I'm going to start with Dylan. I need to move him up. Free change of stance. Through the door for one. I suppose I've got to check these. Q, P, Q, Q7, Q8, Q9. Q9. Yeah, I want to get on with the action, but you've got to check every paragraph because it could be a hidden German somewhere. Q9. That's sighting four. We've had sighting four. So that's one. R9. I know we've done before. That's fine. And he comes into here. Three, four. Okay. That's Dylan. Done. However, Bell could give him another turn now. So Bell gives his command to Dylan, who will now take a shot out the windy at Cypher. With his browning. Three hex range is short. Dylan's got a plus one weapon skill. So it's short range is five. And weapon skill makes six. Crouching in that is brush, isn't it? It's down one. Oh no, that's woods. Down three. Takes it to a three. Not good. Um, first of all, I've got to determine if the gun jams. So, reds are tens, five percent chance. <laughs> I'm not getting it, am I? I'm not five percent chance. It jams. 
dear, oh dear, oh dear. And that's Dylan's action. His free action that was given to him by Bell is gun jams. So he went back to Vaughan, tried to take a shot. Perfect. Okay, Evans, who's wounded, occupying the vehicle, he takes a free stance. He goes into a crouch. Moves the prone. He will take a shot at Zypher. Let's do, before we work everything out, 5% chance of, of jamming his weapon. No, he doesn't jam his weapon. Okay, it's a good start. Short range is five. Weapon skill for Evans is zero, but he is wounded. That knocks his weapon skill down by one. So five, down one for the wound, four, and the woods is minus three. Needs a one. Needs a one. Rolls a one. Five, wounded four. Take away three. Yeah, one. Evans, he must be absolutely pissed. He's been shot at by that bastard. And he goes into a crouch with his automatic rifle and lets rip. Okay. Now, the actual effect, we want to... Oh, oh come on back. let's go back to the die roll. He needs a high roll to hurt that German. Come on. A seven. A seven. Uh, there's no vindictiveness here. Well, there is. <laughs> He's really been hurting me. Okay, so it is a semi automatic rifle with a seven, is incapacitated. Okay, so moving Evans, that's him now completed. And we now still have Cornwall and Hudson. Remark the German incapacitated. Okay. So you should be crouching. Yeah. So well, the German sniper here. I want to get over here. We've got two prone here. All right, Cornwall. Can we afford to that aggressive? There's a crest line that these Germans, that they can't see down here. So if we can get up here, This guy here can't see through those woods. Okay. So, crawling out the window will be two. Going up an elevation. Don't think it's any. Plus one for embankment, elevation change. Hex size, no additional. So if I can get Cornwall to here. So, where is he? There he is. Free stance change for one. But <laughs> free stance change for none. Through the window. Or if you go one. Two, three. We can get to there. Yeah, let's go through the door. For one. So that's S10. The sighting five. We've had sighting five, so there's nothing. So that's one. Two. That is T9.
that we refer to citing five, so there's nothing additional, so it's two. U9. U9. Still citing one. Five, so that's three movement points to there. You can't get any further because that's going up an embankment. So let's put him into a crouch there. Okay, so that's Cornwall completed. Cipher needs to be removed. Where is Cipher? Down there. Okay. That just leaves good old Hudson over here. Hmm. Okay. I want it to be in command range. She's only got three movement points. So stance change from prone to active to moving. He then goes one, two into P8. Bridge is none. And then enters this building here for that's Q7, Q8. Now, paragraph 158. If S2 has occurred, which it has, Conduct activation check. If successful, C175. If S2 has not occurred, C1 to right. So, activation check, 0 to 6. Oh dear, what's, what's Hudson done now? 2. We have an activate. If successful, C175. Man finds frightened French boy in a small wine cellar. Oh. He tells of seeing German soldiers in a nearby grove around hex N12. Nearby grove around hex N12. Thanks, French boy. Yeah, we, we, we found that. We could have done with you earlier. N12. Doop. <laughs> but it's good to know. All right, I, I like that. So if I'd actually come this way round, in from the north, and found him, he'd have given me that information. Okay, very thematic. We pat the young lad on the, or well, Hudson packs a lad on the, head, on the head, but he ain't giving me his bit of chocolate. That's not Hudson, he, he don't give out chocolate. Need to give myself a couple of victory points as well. I am giving myself one for this building, or this hex here. So that's two more VP, which takes me to 18. Okay. Um, so we'll stick that on that hex there at the present moment, and one on that hex as well once we leave the, the, the hexes, so they're ready. Okay, and that's Hudson. So, he's still, yeah, he, can't, he hasn't got a free starts change, so that's Hudson done. Okay, again, for the Germans in alpha order, we've got Paulus. No, we've got Nyman. First Nyman up here. Okay, what is Nyman going to do? Um, we have to roll a new German. Did I do that? Well, I can't remember. When they had actions here, did I re-roll it? 
two. I'll have to check. Okay, so Nyman will be using paragraph 810, which says, you've got something about wounded or killed within two hexes, which is none. If in sight of an active target, which he is, crouch and conduct best fire. So I've just removed his prone and his best fire is into here. Can't see this because of the trees. Can't see Hudson because it's a solid wall. So yeah, it's a, into that hex and it's a 50-50. So odd, he'll hit um, Dylan. Rolled a one, so it's odd, odd number. So he's shooting at Dylan, who's crouching through the window. So Nyman is, what's the range? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for a sniper rifle, that's two to eight is short range. So that's a five. He gets two because of his weapon skill. He's an excellent shot. So that's seven. And fire a crouch guy through the windows minus four. So it's a three. A three to hit. Rolls a seven. Blimey. Does he crouch after that shot? It's so crouch and conduct best fire. He doesn't do anything else than that. Ooh. Okay. So that's Nyman. He's now complete. Next up we have Paulus from this hex here. Activation number two. Paulus. Um, right. Not the three. He does paragraph nine seven zero. Yeah. Yeah. Nine seven zero. If German thirty seven or fifty is killed or incapacitated or not in this hex, crawl. Okay. If German 37, that's himself. If German 37 or 50 is killed or incapacitated or not in this hex, crawl, otherwise conduct 801. So he conducts 801. I thought he might have done something because he... Um, yeah, he's looking at the other uh, the other guy in his hex with him. Yeah, he's fine. Okay, so if German 37 or 50 is killed or incapacitated or not in this hex, crawl. But he doesn't crawl. Otherwise, conduct 801. 801. Crouch. Then conduct best fire at easiest target. Fall prone after fire if free stance chain available. Well, he has to come out of his... Right. Best fire. Okay, that will be Evans there. Now, will it? Yeah, the crest is that way. So he's firing straight down. So he comes out prone. This is Paulus. So Rasmus is still crouching. So Paulus crouches. That's his free stance change. Shoots down at Evans. Now then. I am behind that embankment. I better check the rules for the embankment. Okay, I'm having to check this quite carefully. So the embankment doesn't block line of sight itself. However, this is blocking terrain because it's a wood. And this crest blocks line of sight into this hex. So that's two blocking terrains caused by the crest and the wood. So I don't think Paulus here can actually see me now. And he can't see down here at all. So no, I don't think he can see down it into here. Hmm. So what does he do? Paulus, we're on, we roll a two, condition six. 970. I'll have to check, check him again because I was just to say I had to read that section. Of, and yeah, any any of you guys making observation? Am I doing the line of sight right here? Because 
It's a little bit different to what I'm used to. If German soldiers, all right. Otherwise, 801. Crouch, then conduct best fire. Full program after fire if free starts. He's so, he comes out, of, he's got no target. Because of that wood and that crest. So if he's got no target, he just he just crouches there. Okay. All right. Whew. And then Rasmus six the two nine seventy. No eight two four. Sorry, my bad. Eight two four. Eight two four. Crouch, then conduct best fire at easiest target. Exception: If this target has already been fired at this round, now, again he crouches, but he has no target. Okay. Wow. And that concludes this action round. And I think I'm going to have it conclude this video because it's gone on for a, a, a while. Lots of things happening. Let me bring this back up. Well, that's a lot of action. I'm not sure if I've done everything right there. Um, especially that line of sight. I was a little bit, ooh. But Crest definitely blocks any line of sight. And it goes right up to the hex side. So that means, the yeah, I, I think it's right. But if you guys can, you know, who are experts at this or have a different opinion, let me know. That sniper, though, oh, he's, he's, he's a tricky little customer. And, uh, yeah. So currently, I, as I said, I'm on 18 VP. I need another seven. Um... There are still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven locations I haven't been into yet. However, I have a half, half strength. I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five guys, one of which is wounded. Do I push on or do I start to fall back? Especially that sniper. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Because, you know, if I fall back, I can go through a few of the other buildings. Are the Germans behind me now? I've still got that church to look at. The two Germans on the ridge line there are not great. Their weapon skills are minus two, but they could get lucky shot. But that sniper. Whew, it's a nasty bit of work. Nyman. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed what I'm doing. Please do the, all the YouTube stuff, you know, the like, subscribe, comments, definitely the comments and uh, the little dingling. All helps the channel, promotes it, gets other people to see it. All I can say is have fun, play games, get this one. Get this one definitely. Until next time, bye internet.